I was only saying to someone the other day about the importance of audio in video. Let's say, for example, you're at the cinema and you're watching a film and the visuals are stunning, but the audio is so bad you can barely listen to it. Obviously, that's not good. If you're at a similar film and the visuals aren't all that great, but the audio is absolutely superb, you're more likely to stay and watch the film. So with that in mind, it just so happened that yesterday I was sent through the post a review microphone <laughs> Uh, and it's a micro compact directional condenser shotgun video microphone from Comica. Okay, so if you've been around All Things Photography for any sort of time, or if you know me, then you'll know that I only review products that I think are any good. So when I was asked to review this, I looked it up online, I checked the product out, um, had a look to see what it was all about, and I accepted their challenge, if you like. Um, I get lots of requests to review products for All Things Photography, Many of them I turn down because they just don't interest me. They don't look very good quality. I don't think that people would like them. So I tend to leave those. Now, this one I thought was pretty good. It's a um, small microphone and it's designed to work with smartphones, uh, DSLRs or uh, mirrorless cameras and also GoPro cameras. So it's small form. I haven't opened it yet. I've just got it yesterday. Um, so it's a small form factor and the best thing about this is it actually costs between 40 and 50 pounds. I think this is currently about 45 pounds on Amazon. So if it's any good, that is a steal. That's a very, very good price for what it does. So I'm going to have a quick look at it, but I'm actually going to a party tonight. So I'm going to be testing it out. I'm using the Panasonic GH5 to film with now. I'm going to be using that at the party and I'm going to be using this microphone with it. Um, I like my audio. I'm actually using the 5D Mark IV as a tripod um, for my audio that I'm using for this video. That's all it's good for really. I'm only joking, it's actually a good camera. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be using this with the Panasonic GH5 tonight. I'm going to be using it with my smartphone, the Samsung Galaxy S7. I'm also going to test it with the GoPro HD Hero 5 Black. I need to buy an adapter for that so this will work. I'll come to that in a second. Um, and I'm also gonna compare it to the Rode VideoMic Pro. This actually costs almost three times, or if, if not a little bit more than three times as much as this uh, microphone. So it will be really interesting to see how this fares with it. So I'm gonna have a quick look at it now, have a quick open, see what it's like. If I can get into it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so first of all, it actually comes in a really handy little case, which is perfect. I've got these sort of things for my headphones. I like to look after my gear. And coincidentally, or incidentally, this doesn't. So this cost 150, 160 pounds. Didn't come with a case, just came in a box with a bit of plastic and it's now left to just roam around free. So that's pretty impressive already. Look inside. Okay, it's good. You've got nice bag on this side, foam on that side. And here's the actual microphone. Uh, it's pretty small, which I like. Um, it seems to be made of brushed aluminium. It's not heavy, but you can see it's quality. You can tell it's fairly good quality. It's not plastic, that's for sure. Uh, you've also got a, a foam guard, so that will obviously cancel out any voice, any, I can't remember what they're called now, hisses and things. So it'll actually cancel that out and a bit of wind noise. So that's pretty good. It looks, looks pretty neat. And this is cool. You've actually got a, um, this is a, a vibration um, assist, if you like. So when you've got the microphone in here, let's put this on. Okay, so when you've got the microphone on there and on top of your camera, if you bang the camera, this will actually vibrate and take that noise away. So you're not gonna get any knocking noises from the camera. That's brilliant for a microphone in this price range. So that again is very impressive. Uh, and then on this side, we've got a dead cat. <laughs> These are called uh, like a wind cheater. Um, it's called a dead cat or something like that. Um, but these are brilliant. Again, for this price range, that is superb. So this will go over the microphone again. And if you're outdoors filming, then this will cancel a lot of the wind noise out. So I'm gonna be testing this as well. That is really impressive again for, for this price range. And it's actually very similar to ones that I've got for much, much more expensive microphones. And then you've got cables here. So we've got two cables. This one says for camera, so I assume this is for either the DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, that kind of thing, um, possibly the GoPro as well. And this one is for smartphones, so I'll be using that one with the, the S7 from Samsung. So 
already I'm pretty impressed. It's, it's very good. It looks fantastic. It's small form factor. Um, looks pretty straightforward to use. Um, and it takes three and a half millimeter jack. So if your DSLR or mirrorless camera has a three and a half millimeter audio input, you can use this microphone. If your bigger DSLR has them, or if your smartphone has this, I think for later iPhones, you're going to need an adapter. And also for one of the Samsungs, you're, you're, you're gonna need one. So check the thing you wanna record on to make sure it's got an adapter. Uh, sorry, it's got the three and a half millimeter input. If not, you'll have to get an adapter. So I'm gonna be trying this with the GoPro. Now the GoPro 2 was the last GoPro, I think the only GoPro to actually have a three and a half millimeter jack. I was a bit peed off when they took it off all the others because it was really useful. Um, so if you're using the GoPro 3, 4, 5 or 6, you're going to need to buy the, the relevant adapter to actually use the 3.5mm jack microphone. So I'll be getting one of those for the, the GoPro. So I'm going to be testing this at a party tonight um, with the Panasonic GH5. I'm also going to be testing with the Mark IV Canon. And I'm also going to be testing with the HD Hero 5 Black and also with the Samsung S7. So I'll leave it at that for now. I'm going to go off and have a play with it and then come back and let you know how the audio goes. I'm also going to test it against this one, which is three times the price. So, yep, see you in a bit. Okay, so I took this fab little microphone to the party and I was using it with the GH5, the Panasonic GH5, which I'm using now. And I must say it works really, really well. Um, it's very light, it's phantom powered, so it runs off the battery from the camera, so it needs no batteries of its own. Um, like I said, you can plug it into the DSLR, uh, mirrorless camera, any camera with a three and a half inch jack. Um, it will also, you can also use it with a smartphone, which I did, and also a GoPro. So it's a really handy little microphone to have around, never got to worry about battery power. Um, like I said, it works really well. Now with the GH5, the audio was absolutely brilliant. At one point I was filming outside with people in a jacuzzi, um, children and adults, it wasn't anything like that. Um, but the, the audio was brilliant outside. You could hear the water, you could hear the voices crystal clear. Um, and I was really generally overall very impressed. Um, it's a shotgun mic, so wherever you point it, it's directional, so it'll pick up that, that audio. So it tends to cut out quite a bit of the ambient noise, if you like. So really impressed with that um, on the camera. When I used it on the smartphone, it was really good, really clear, and much better than the, the audio on the microphone that comes with the camera, uh, with the phone, sorry. And there's the bedroom the morning after, just testing the microphone on my chest. See what that sounds like. Can you hear me? So again, it's something really handy to have around with that, but you do need a clamp to attach it to the phone if you're gonna use it that way. At the moment, I'm using audio from the Zoom H6, which is the Lavalier mic on my chest, so that should be really good audio. Um, but I'm also going to show you the difference between the audio on the built-in microphone on the Lumix GH5 from Panasonic um, against the Comica mic. I'm also going to test it with the 5D Mark IV with the internal mic and then with this mic. I'm going to do the same with the GoPro and with my Samsung smartphone. So without further ado, I'm now going to switch to the internal audio on the Panasonic GH5. Okay, so now you're only hearing me from the Panasonic GH5 built-in audio, the built-in microphones on the front. So you should be seeing a, a slight difference. So if we switch back to the audio from the Zoom, which is on my chest, so that's, that's the normal audio. Then we go back to the GH5. You can see already there's a, much, there's a big difference. Obviously the Lavellio mic is always gonna be the best, but at the moment we've got the GH5 with the internal audio. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna to switch to the Comica mic on the GH5. Okay, so now you're hearing me from just the Comica mic um, on top of the Panasonic GH5. Now I've got it, obviously, with the three and a half mil jack, I've got it, so the three and a half millimeter jack, I've got it pushed into the microphone uh, input on the GH5. And I've also got the internal microphone down at minus 12 decibels. So hopefully the audio is picking up fairly clear. Um, but now let's just switch back to the Lavellier mic. So I'm now on the Lavellier mic, so you can see the difference. So I switch back to the, the camera with the Comica, and we're now on the Comica microphone. So you can see, hopefully it's picking up good audio um, from the directional microphone pointed straight at me. Um, so you can get an idea from this, how it worked with the, the Lumix GH5. And again, it draws its power from the actual battery in the camera and not on the microphone. So 
you've never really got any um, worry of the microphone running out of power before the actual camera does. So yeah, hopefully that's sounding pretty good. So we're next going to check it with the, uh, the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV using both internal audio and the Comica microphone. Okay, so now you're hearing me from the internal audio on the 5D Mark IV, you're also seeing me from that footage. I'm filming in 4K, so I may have come in a bit closer um, because the, the crop factor on the camera. But yeah, this is the audio using the internal microphone on the 5D Mark IV. So we're gonna switch now to the, the uh, Comica mic on the 5D Mark IV. So I've gotta get up, plug it in and come back. So back in a sec, but this is the audio from the internal microphone at the moment. Okay, so this is now the audio from the Comica attached into the, uh, the three and a half mil jack on the 5D Mark IV. And hopefully the audio is okay. Now, because I'm about 10 feet away from the camera, I've actually increased the audio in the camera um, by quite a, by about five or six stops. So I've increased the, um, the sensitivity of the microphone um, within the camera. Like I said, the Comica itself doesn't have any adjustment parameters on it, no switches or buttons. So you have to do any kind of um, additional work inside whatever camera you're using. And obviously the GoPro and your smartphones don't normally tend to have that. But with the 5D Mark IV, um, the Panasonic GH5 and most other DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, you've got an ability to actually increase or um, de increase or decrease the sound output and signal uh, from the microphone. So this should be, I'm hoping, better quality than you saw before. So this is now the Comica on the 5D Mark IV. Um, hopefully it's better than the audio from the internal microphone. So after playing with some of the audio in post-production, I realized that the 5D Mark IV, the audio was quite hissy. So I figured out that I needed to turn on the, the wind or noise attenuator within the manual settings in the uh, 5D Mark IV. And I noticed the hiss decreased quite a lot. So hopefully now you're hearing a significant difference from the, uh, the microphone, the Comica, on top of the 5D Mark IV. And the audio should be a lot clearer now with less hiss and less ambient noise. So bear that in mind if you're buying this for a DSLR. Check the audio settings and try and eliminate as much noise as possible. The microphone itself is actually very good. Okay, so finally we're using the Samsung S7 um, with just the internal audio at the moment. So all there is is a small microphone on the bottom of the phone. Um, and I'm thinking it's gonna be picking up a lot of the, the bouncing audio in this room. Um, but I think the audios are pretty good from smartphones these days. Um, but obviously if you want better, you're better off using something like this, like the Comica. Uh, you can use the Rode, but it's way bigger and it needs battery power. Um, and it's way more expensive. So I'm now gonna plug this one in to see if there's much difference between the internal audio on the S7 and the Comica condenser microphone. Okay, so finally you're seeing me from the Samsung S7 using the Comica microphone attached to the three and a half millimeter jack below. If you've got any other smartphones, you're gonna to need to get an adapter just to allow that to be used in your phone, whether it's an iPhone or something else. Now the image quality may be slightly different to the previous video because I was using the Filmic Pro app on the Samsung for the previous shot for the internal audio, but I couldn't find a way to actually get the microphone to work with the with that app. Um, you have got the ability to change it, but I couldn't find one for the external microphone. So I've reverted back to the in-house video on the Samsung, and you're now hearing me through the audio on the Comica plugged in. So I hope it's sounding better than the internal audio. Um, because I think it's a really good microphone. I'm going to kind of finish this up now. Okay, so I've used the Comica microphone with various cameras such as the GH5, the 5D Mark IV, the Samsung Galaxy S7, and it's worked pretty well with those. The only one I couldn't get it to work with was the GoPro HD Hero Black. That's the 5, and I'm assuming this is the same with the 6. I did buy an adapter, which is a USB-C to 3.5mm jack input. Couldn't get it to work. In the menu system, when you input a powered external mic, it should come up with um, a choice between internal and external. Couldn't get it to come up, uh, which meant that that doesn't work. And I since found out that you have to use the GoPro actual version, their own version, which is a large chunky kind of adapter. And I think it's powered as well. So that's the only thing that works with this. So it's, it's huge, it adds weight to the camera. It's 45 pounds, so I'm not gonna buy that just for the sake of a review. And I still don't understand why GoPro took the three and a half millimeter jack from the GoPro HD Hero 2, which it had, and it's not in the 3, the 3 Plus, the 4, the 5, or the 6. 
I think they should put it back in and make this a really versatile camera. So GoPro, if you're listening, please put that back in. Wasn't able to check that or we'll test it with the microphone, so I'll leave that to one side. What I did notice with the all the other cameras is, um, when the microphone's about maybe 10 feet away, it's gonna be like any other microphone. It's gonna pick up external noise, it's gonna pick up ambient sounds and things like that. You've probably heard some of it in the review where people next door were banging about, closing, opening doors. Um, so it's gonna pick up that sort of thing. Where I did notice it was good was when I used it with the Samsung Galaxy S7 and I was holding it fairly close. It worked really, really well. The sound was really crystal clear, didn't pick up a lot of ambient noise, just my voice, so it worked really well. So I think with the microphone on top of the camera, if you're vlogging, blogging, holding it and walking with it, or if the camera's closer to you, or if you're in a soundproof room, it's gonna work really well. But I think for close quarters, it's really good. Um, so I know the audio is clean coming out of there, it just depends on the ambient sounds around you. So to test this against the Rode video mic, I'm going to use the Zoom H6, and the only way I can get either of these microphones to work with this is by attaching it to the front module here. I've tried it with adapters going into the side units, um, but it just doesn't work. So I'm gonna use each one simultaneously and see, see how they fare. So at the moment, I've got the Rode Video Mic Pro in. I've got it on naught decibels, so it's just a straight signal. And I can see on here, I'm getting a signal. So I'm gonna now switch to from the I've got my Lavelier mic in with the Sony radio mics. So now I'm gonna to switch to the Rode Video Mic Pro now. So now you're hearing me on the Rode Video Mic Pro into the Zoom H6. So you can probably hear it's a really good clean audio system. Um, and I'm not sure how it'll compare to the Comica, but this is the Rode going into the Zoom 6 um, using a three and a half millimeter jack on the front input there. So I'm now gonna switch them over and see if we can see much difference. Okay, so now you're hearing me on the Comica. Um, both very similar microphones. The Rode's obviously a bit bigger. The Comica's much smaller, much lighter, um, and it doesn't need its own power. This is now pulling power from the Zoom. So that's where one of the big differences lies. Um, love the Rode, great microphone, but I never know when the battery's gonna run out. It hasn't got a gauge on there, so it could be a real problem. Because the Comica pulls power from whatever you're recording, you're never gonna lose power without losing visuals as well. So hopefully this sounds really good as well. So like I said, the Comica is 42 pounds. It comes with a box and a decent case. It comes with a foam guard there and with a dead cat and with the uh, the, the sound vibration reducer, um, like a mount. Uh, the Rode doesn't come with a case or anything. It does come with the, the shock mount um, and it's a very good microphone, but there, there's, uh, the road is three times the price of the Comica, so hopefully you're hearing a difference. I'm gonna unplug and go back to the road. Okay, so we're now back on the road microphone, and they're both the same distance away from me. I'm getting the similar sort of signals in the Zoom H, so that's the road microphone. Let's switch back once more. And we're back on the Comica. So hopefully they're both giving really good clean audio outputs. I like the Comica, I think it's good value for money. There are similar microphones out. I know Rode have a similar microphone, um, just slightly more expensive, but it doesn't come with a case and it doesn't come with the, the dead cat. So I think as a general walk around microphone, it's great. You can, wherever you're going, you don't need, fan, you don't need power because it runs off phantom power. So if you've got your phone with you, plug it straight in, you've got great audio. Same with the Panasonic GH5 or a DSLR, any type of camera with a three and a half millimeter jack, I think this is worth having. Great to have in your bag just for those emergency audio situations.